All right, so today we're going to be doing some pumping lemma examples. We're going to be taking languages and showing that they're non regular using the pumping lemma. So if you want to look in SIPSER for examples, including the examples we're doing today, you can look on pages 80 to 82. This is a companion video for lecture five. All right, here's our first example. Let's show that the language A equals zero to the n, one to the n, for any n greater than or equal to zero is non-regular. So keeping it nice and simple, this is one of our most basic non-regular languages. It's the language of all binary strings that start with a string of zeros and then have a string of ones, and those two strings are the same length. So whenever we're trying to prove that a language is non-regular using the pumping lemma, we're going to proceed using contradiction. So remember that the pumping lemma, it's this loopiness property that all infinite regular languages have. So we're going to assume for contradiction that A is regular, in which case A satisfies the pumping lemma. So the pumping lemma applies to all regular languages. So if it doesn't apply to A, then A must not be regular. That's the logic of our argument. So by our assumption, we know the following. We know that there exists some number that we'll call P, the pumping length, such that all sufficiently long strings in A, so all strings S in the language A with the length of S being at least P satisfy, um, these, all of these sufficiently long strings are gonna satisfy the three conditions of the pumping lemma. So I'll write instead of satisfy, can be divided into three substrings. S equals X concatenated with Y concatenated with Z, such that our first condition, X, Y, I, Z is in the language for all i greater than or equal to zero. Remember our intuition that y is the string that represents this loop in the computation. So we should be able to go around our loop any number of times and still have a computational path that takes us from the start state to the accept state. Two, the length of y is greater than zero, which means we've got a non-trivial loop. And three, um, x, y is at most p. Um, which means we're going to see a loop before we reach the pumping length. Now, for our purposes, we're really just trying to find a contradiction here. We've assumed for contradiction that A is regular, A satisfies the pumping lemma, so every sufficiently long string S in the language A can be broken down in a way that satisfies these three conditions. What that means is that to find a contradiction, all we need to do is find one string S that's in the language and sufficiently long but doesn't satisfy all three of these conditions. So let's pick the string S equals zero to the P, one to the P. So yes, this string is in our language. And yes, this string is at least the pumping length P. Usually when I pick this string, I'm going to see the number P appear somewhere because P is a quantity we know exists, but we don't have a fixed number we can attach to it. So when we define our string S, we're gonna to wanna to define some string in the language of length at least P. We're gonna to wanna to use P in the definition. Why did I pick this particular string? Well, in this case, I just picked uh, the simplest string I could think of that meet our, met our criteria. Uh, P zeros followed by P ones. Um, so let's see if it's possible for this string to meet all three of the conditions. 
So first we'll observe by three, the length of x, y is at most p, which means x and y are made up of zeros. So this is because I've got p0 starting my string, x and y, these first two substrings, any way I divide s into x, y, z that meets these conditions will have x and y being all zeros. So without loss of generality, any possible division of s into x, y, and z has to have uh, x and y being made up of all zeros. And by condition two, since y has length greater than zero, so y contains at least one zero. So what I'm doing now is I'm assuming s meets these three conditions and I'm reasoning on that basis. What that means is if s is some string, it'll have p zeros followed by P1s, I've reasoned based on my pumping conditions that X and Y will have to be all zeros if I wanna meet the three conditions above. So now consider X, Y, 2, Z, which is just X, Y, Y, Z which is in the language A by one. It tells me I can repeat my loop any number of times. So I can imagine it looks just like this, except I've plugged in an extra two zeros in this hypothetical case. So whatever x, y, two, z is, um, x, y, y, z equals zero, the p, plus again, an additional number of zeros equal to the length of y, and then one to the p. And that just follows from the fact that I've said um, that y consists of uh, at least one zero. But this is not in the language A, because my string of zeros and my string of ones do not have the same length. So I have found a string which um, is at least length p, it's in the language, but it does not satisfy the pumping conditions. It cannot be pumped. And that's what I need. I need a contradiction string. So therefore, um, A does not satisfy the pumping lemma. It's not true that all sufficiently long strings uh, meet the conditions set forth in the pumping lemma. So our assumption that a, that a is regular leads to a contradiction and a must be non-regular. All right, that's our first example. Now I'm gonna go a little bit faster and do one that's a little bit more advanced. So here's my second example. We're gonna show that B, that is the language of all zeros, whose length is a square number, that is zero to the n squared, where n is some um, integer greater than or equal to zero, is non-regular. So I'm going to start my proof the exact same way. So we will assume for contradiction that B is regular from which it follows that B satisfies the pumping lemma and try to find a contradiction resulting from this statement. So this means there exists 
some number p such that strings s in the language b with the length of s being at least p can be divided into substrings x, y, z such that x, y, i, z is in the language for all i greater than or equal to zero, two y is greater than zero, and three x, y is at most p. So again, that's what the pumping lemma tells us. If B is regular, then B satisfies the pumping lemma. And these three things are true for every sufficiently long string in the language. Um, so now let's pick a string in the language. Here, I don't want to pick zero to the P. The reason I don't want to pick that is because it's not guaranteed to be in the language. So the pumping lemma guarantees me some number P. It doesn't guarantee me that P is a square number. However, P squared is definitely a square number. Um, it's also definitely at least as big as P. So zero to the P squared will be our string. S. And in this case, S is in the language and the length of S is indeed at least P. Now, um, let's do some reasoning about x and y as we did before. So clearly, x and y are made up of all zeros. Um, moreover, y contains at least one zero. We also know that since the length of xy is at most p, this implies that the length of y is at most p. So we have upper and lower bounds on um, the length of y. So now let's consider again x, y, y, z. That is y repeated twice, which must be in the language by the conditions above. Uh, note that even though I've just given two examples in which x, y, y, z helps us find a contradiction, uh, you could also try strings such as x, z. That's y repeated zero times, or x, y to the 10th z. Uh, those are both also strings that our conditions tell us should be in the language. So if I can find a contradiction there, then I'm also good. All right, so let's consider x, y, y, z. Um, so x, y, y, z, I will take the substring y, which will be some string of zeros. And I will add it again in the middle to the string x, y, z. So the result will be the string 0 to the p squared plus the length of y. That's my string x, y, y, z. And that follows just because I've duplicated y. But now I know the following. Because y is greater than 0, I know um, p squared plus y is greater greater than or equal to p squared plus one. It's also less than or equal to p squared plus p. That follows from my two bounds on y. Um, now, p plus one squared just equals p squared plus two p plus one. So what that means is that um, p squared is less than p squared plus y um, is less than p plus one squared. That just follows from my upper and lower bounds on y. But here, I found my contradiction. There are many ways to divide up x, y, z into strings of zeros. But as long as the string y has length at least one and at most p, uh, it follows that 0 to the p squared plus y does not have a length which is a square number because the length p squared plus y is bigger than p squared and smaller than p squared plus 1. 
sorry, p plus one squared. So therefore, x, y, y, z is not in my language b. So b fails the pumping lemma and b must be non-regular because our assumption that it was regular led to a contradiction. So those are our two pumping language examples, sorry, pumping lemma examples. I hope they were helpful to you uh, and I will see you in class.